Hey, welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video series, I'm going to be talking about the Atezer P10 Laser. And this is a little bit of a departure from what I normally do on my channel, which is 3D printers. Uh, I would like to compare the Atezer P10 Laser to a laser that I've been using for quite some time, since about 2018, which is the Glowforge Laser. And I know those are two different classes of lasers, but I think that nowadays with uh, how far diode lasers have come, which is what the a Tesser P10 is, uh, there's a lot you can really do and you can do it for a very reasonable price, probably under a thousand dollars even. It's about what the A Tesser laser that I'm testing is around. Uh, the Glowforge on the other hand is around four thousand dollars and up. I've been into lasers for quite a while as I mentioned. Some of the things that I made over the years include things like this lamp that you've probably noticed in my video if you've been watching for a while. This is all laser cut, something that I designed myself. I also tend to do a lot of engraving Leather coasters are things that I've been doing lately. Uh, if you watch my Twitter, you've probably seen them on there as well. So I do have a lot that I intend to continue using my laser for. Throughout this series, I'm going to be talking about what you can do with the diode laser, how it compares to, say, something like a Glowforge. But in this first video, I'm just going to talk simply about how to build the thing. It's really simple, and then I'm going to show my first engraving. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and get all the parts out of the box and set them here. And then I'm going to go ahead and begin assembly. I've got just about everything set out here except for the rotary tool and I'm going to save that for later. So here's another view of everything from the overhead. So a lot of these cables and things I'm probably not going to need just yet so I'll set those aside. Including the power supply, we're going to use those later. You will need this bag of screws in order to get everything assembled. So we're going to leave that out. Also going to need this stepper motor cable here. And these snazzy green glasses. I think we're probably going to set these aside as well. And I will be using the installation manual here. And if you'll notice, this applies to the P5, 10, and 20 plus. So if you have one of those models, the steps should be very similar, if not the same. And on page four, it just kind of lays out all the main pieces you're going to need and what they're called. And I'm just going to go ahead and start with the framework assembly here on uh, step one. I went ahead and cleared everything off, and now I've got my bags of screws and the four pieces that I need in order to do the first few steps. The nice thing about the screws is they're all labeled, so you got one, two three and four, and we're gonna go ahead and do step one. The other thing that you'll notice here is I've got a ceramic uh, patio tile here. This is something that I just use to make sure that my build surface is nice and, st and stable. So I recommend using a hard surface like this if you have one. These steps are very straightforward. We're just gonna put the screws in all the corners. Now there are Allen key wrenches provided in the kit, but I'm gonna go ahead and use these bond hus drivers, which I really like to use. All right, I'm gonna start with the front corner. And I just went ahead and ran that cable, stick this in here on the inside. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it counterclockwise. And I'll do the next corner. And this is really the same process. We're just gonna do the three screws. And here you can see it all connected and installed and oriented as in the manual. And for step two, we're going to need these M2, M514s. Now, the manual does say M525s, but these are, these are uh, they, they probably changed since they wrote the manual. So these are going to go in the corner of the side where this Atezer logo is. So I'll go ahead and lift that up and show it. And you're just going to install those right in here. When you feel that bump, that's where it's going to go right into the belt tensioner. So we're good there on the tension. And just repeat that for the other side. I've got the x-axis now and I'm going to go ahead and install this. Now this might be a little tricky. Um, I've got the back of the frame right here. The front with the button is that way. So when you install this, make sure that this is facing the front of the machine. The other thing I did is I slid these uh, pieces here that hold the gantry all the way to the back. I think that's going to make it a lot easier for me to install this. So I'll go ahead and set this on top. And then I'm going to take my step three screws, which are these M558s. The manual says 60, but what's two millimeters? Go ahead and take those out and get them installed. And to do this, I'm just going to lay them in here. And there should be, they should be right on top, ready to grab. And then I'm just going to repeat for remaining three. All right, those are in. And for step four, we're just going to flip it over and install these bottom feet. So I'll go ahead and do that now. 
and you'll just be using the step four screws, which are M5 by sixes. Okay, I've got it flipped over now. I've got the control box here, which is the front of the machine. So I'm gonna find the four feet and I'll go ahead and attach them with the step four screws. Got my feet. I'll go ahead and line up the first one. So it's right into place and I'll go ahead and sink those. And there's three screws per foot. Those are all nice and tight. I'm gonna repeat for all four corners, the three remaining. And next up, we're gonna install this smooth rod. It's gonna go all the way into this coupling here that sits on the motor. And in order to get this to fit in, you're gonna to have to loosen this screw, insert it, and then tighten it up. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert this through the front of the frame. I think it's also gonna be a lot easier just to leave your frame upside down when you do this step. Okay, so you can see I'm just going ahead and inserting this in here as such and slide it all the way down. And once I get it all the way down, I'm just gonna slide it in. And just watch this antenna too. It's kind of flopping around here, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. It might end up dropping on it, but that's okay. This one's already tightened, but this one you have to tighten up pretty good. I'm actually gonna back this out and put a little Loctite on it as well. I've got some blue, this is actually blue Permatex, similar to Loctite, but I've got, I'll put the link to that in the description. But I've got that on that screw there. And that's just going to make sure that it doesn't come loose over time. It's a good idea to put that on here because otherwise, um, if this gets loose, you might start seeing some mistakes on your piece. All right, so I've got that in there nice and locked in. And then I'm going to just go ahead and check and make sure that's rotating. Yep, so when I turn the, the bar, it rotates as well. That's what you want to see. And there is another pulley down here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to back it out. You might need a different driver. That's a smaller set screw. I'm going to go ahead and back that out, and you can see there's no Loctite on it. So that's going to be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more Loctite or Permatex on this. Okay, so I've got some on there, and I'm just going to come back, insert it back in carefully, not to lose it, and then I'll go ahead and just torque it in there. And you want to make it, you want to torque it in really nice and tight. Okay, that's nice and tight, and then I'm going to repeat. There's another one, so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the second one here. And it helps if you use a magnetic screwdriver like I've got. Okay, I've got the Permatex again on my scrub screw, and I've got it angled so I can go straight down with it. I think those are going to be nice and secure. Okay, on step six, I'm going to go ahead and flip it back over, and we're going to be installing the laser head. Okay, I've got it into position now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install this, make sure this is facing the front, and then it's also on the bottom. And don't just drop it, you gotta lock it in because it'll just go all the way through if you don't. Doesn't really matter exactly where you lock it in, but just make sure it's locked. So we've got that in there. It should be able to move around fairly freely. I did notice there's a little bit of tightness as I move it, but that's just because the, the way the tent belts are tensioned. And for step seven, we're going to go ahead and install three cable ties on the back of the x-axis here. And to install these, you just need to remove this VHB tape uh, backing on the back and then stick them. I already stuck the first one on. And I've got all three installed now on the X. And I've rotated the unit so that this uh, piece here is on the corner. And I'm going to go ahead and insert the remaining three here. And you can see how I've got this installed. And this gantry is about the halfway point. But I went ahead and got one here, here, and here. And right, now that we've got all that done, now I'm just going to go ahead and connect these, the cables here. And these really only plugged in one way, so this one here, smaller one, two pin is going to go right into here, which I believe is a limit switch, so it knows how far it can go back. And this guy here is going to go into the motor. Okay, you can kind of see here how the motor connects. I've got it on the side. So this is just gonna go into here and there's only a certain way it can go in. And you can see that's now connected. Make sure it's firmly seated in there, not loose at all. I'm gonna route these cables down this channel now and just go ahead and you'll figure out how to insert it in. There's really only one way. You gotta go outside and inside. And this is what it looks like. So you just kind of weave it in through these connectors. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the motor and the other end stop. 
with the uh, remaining cable here. All right, there we go. And make sure that's seated nice and firm. You can see my cables are underneath here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these up and then route, route the remaining cable through the pieces here. And then we'll come all the way up to the tool head here. And to finish this up, you're just gonna take this cable here and plug it right into the tool head. Okay, I went ahead and pushed mine in and I used a, just this um, driver here just to push it in a little more. Make sure it's firmly seated and should be good. And you also need this HDMI cable and it's just gonna connect to the side here. We'll go ahead and do that. And now that's all installed. And from what I understand, this isn't super useful unless you wanna print directly off the SD card. Otherwise, you're probably going to be using it connected to your computer right here. And the air assist is important to keep the flames away from the laser and keep it from uh, getting gunked up. So this is a hose that was included. And all you're going to do with this is connect this end onto here. And it should connect pretty easily. And then the other end is going to connect to your air assist unit. All right, I've gone ahead and gotten a bigger table out because the one I had was a little too small. This is a really large unit. So that, that's good and bad because on the, on the plus side, you're going to have a large cutting area and engraving area. On the downside, you're going to need a pretty large table. I did go ahead and connect the uh, controller here to the power supply here. There's also a cable that splits the input, so you can use the, the same power supply for the air compressor. I went ahead and tested the air compressor. Come down here, and I ran the tube. I connected it here, and then connected the back end to the air compressor outlet. So it's working pretty good. It is a little annoying in terms of the sound, but that's to be expected with uh, any time you're moving air. Before I get started cutting, I just want to talk a little bit about safety. Safety is something that's very important to me and my family. I am inside, cutting inside in a house, actually in my basement, which is where my maker corner is. In order to do that, I need to make sure that I take proper safety precautions. And the two areas that I'm most concerned about, one of them are the the fumes or the vapors that are emitted when you cut, uh, that can generate something called VOCs or volatile organic compounds. And those can cause irritation to your lungs, your, your nose, your sinuses. Those aren't good, those aren't healthy. So you wanna make sure that you have adequate uh, ventilation and filtering. Um, for my Glowforge laser, I happen to have a nice uh, filter that sucks all that in. You also may be able to vent that out depending on your setup. The second area that I'm concerned about is eye safety. And I do know that the glass that is on the laser, um, I believe it it uh, keeps about, it reflects about 97%. You know, I'm, I'm not really sure if that's safe enough. Do you know that in the US there are ANSI certifications, ANSI or ANSI? And those, uh, if, if you do your research on that, you're gonna learn about different levels of OD. I did find some that are support this uh, wavelength of laser and they're certified, they're tested by a U.S. company and they also uh, are only about $100. That is a little bit steeper, but I, I prefer not to take my chances. So I'm going to be wearing laser safety goggles or glasses. Yeah, they seem to fit really good. And they also have side protection. So even with the laser light coming in from the side, um, I'm, I'm going to be okay to see. All the good pairs of goggles do have markings that cover what they're uh, protecting against for the wavelength. And before you cut, you're gonna need some kind of surface. I went ahead and got this uh, laser mesh. A Tezzer sells one. I like this type where you can actually magnet things down. If you wanna just be able to hold pieces down, you can use magnets, which I, I find to be pretty helpful. And you, you definitely wanna be able to protect your surface. So this has a stainless steel bottom on it, so the laser's not gonna go through. The feet that I have on here right now are for the rotary tool. So unfortunately, the laser is just gonna to be too high to cut on this. So I can either raise this up, which I may do, or I can switch to these lower feet, which um, since this is my first time running the laser, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to these feet so I can just do a test uh, engrave. And luckily it is pretty easy to switch feet. I'm just going to set it on the side and then remove three screws to replace them. I'm noticing that this is really rough and there's like some dips when I move this head. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the eccentric nut on this to make sure that I've got a smoother travel because I just know if I don't do that, I'm probably gonna have some mistakes in my uh, laser uh, engraving or cutting here. And Atezer did include this wrench here that we're gonna use. And then you're just gonna go ahead and insert it in here with your head centered. 
and this is where you're going to tighten it or loosen it and you're going to use the the bigger side of it so i'll go ahead and try to do that here so you can either go left or right and i'm just going to experiment with it to figure out what the right setting is okay and i did turn it a little bit it seems better but there's still some of those rough spots so i i think my problem is actually the belt tension so i'm going to go ahead and flip it over and adjust that now my y-axis it's very smooth so i don't think there's anything needed there but I noticed that the belts are extremely tight on the X. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust those next. As you can see, that just really seems really tight. There's two things you have to do. The first one you gotta do is loosen these. And then after that, you loosen this a little bit and adjust it. And then after that, you just tighten it back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and do that now. Okay, so I loosened it up. Now it's about there. That tension's a lot lower. And it's moving nice and pretty, pretty smooth, a lot smoother than it was before. So I think that's pretty good. Now you can do the same approach uh, for the, the Y as well. And the ATESR site does have a link that shows how to do this. So I'll, I'll go ahead and link that in the description. Okay, I now have the cover on here, the safety cover. And it has a nice window here as well as here for safety protection. And it's interesting that the panel here is the same color as my glasses. This cover is very easy to set up. I didn't have to screw anything in. I literally just unfolded it and laid it over top. There's also a hole over here, and this is where you would connect your hose. It comes with one. It also comes with a fan. So the fan goes here, and it kind of helps circulate. If you already have a filter, you probably won't need the fan, and you can just attach the hose. Um, there's also kind of a nice little handy tool holder here. But this is um, this is going to be really safe, I think. Uh, one, the only complaint I have is that the plastic that you have to remove on the screen is a little hard to do. And I actually, um, when I was pulling it, it ripped out that screw. So I ended up just trimming it off. It seems like it's going to be good. I understand it's also fireproof. So there's like a black kind of material here that seems pretty good. I think I saw a demo where somebody held a lighter up to it and it didn't do anything. This is going to definitely help keep you safe. Got a little piece of hickory wood here. This is probably around maybe four millimeters. I'm just going to try to engrave it and see what it comes out as. It's just some scrap wood that I have. So my next steps are going to be to go ahead and just test an engrave on here. And I need to find a suitable starting point for the power. And here you can just see what I'm doing with light burn. And then I've used this uh, frame button over here just to get it right to where I need it. So I think I'm pretty good to go with light burn so far. And I did find that Atezer does have some settings published. I'm going to try this plywood. Uh, fill and grave 43001 for mine. And I did find a nice tutorial on the Lightburn site that explains how to add text. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to type in here first engrave. So I went ahead and I set my speed and power to 3000 for speed, 40 for power, and mode for line. And I'm going to see if that works. So let's go ahead and hit start and see what happens. Okay, hopefully you can see that. It's actually going pretty quick. And I can uh, tell by the smell it's doing something. It looks like it's extremely light. So I'm probably, probably going to have to redo it with a higher power setting. But uh, it's definitely doing something. It's really not all that cool, but it did do my first engrave. And uh, it looks pretty good. I just did an outline text there. Okay, now I'm just going to try something a little bit different. This is part of my logo, and I'm going to do a similar test and try to engrave this. And here it is going. Looks like it's uh, definitely doing it. I think I could slow it down to get a darker engrave, but I'm actually pretty impressed how quick that's going. That's really just one pass. And I've taken it out of the enclosure, and I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, I'm, I definitely have a lot more playing around to do, but this is off to a really good start, and it was actually pretty easy to get up and running with Lightburn. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you're putting together a kit and, this, and you end up following my steps, please uh, comment and let me know. If you have any questions or ideas for a future video here uh, regarding the laser, what you'd like to see me cut or engrave, uh, please shoot me a comment as well. I'd love to hear it. And I'd also like to thank Atezer for sending me the P10 unit that I can test along with the safety cover. Thanks again for watching and I'm looking forward to testing this out.